Hey guys. Uh, so here something uh, move happened. A guy is signed free agency. Uh, so if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, comment below. Give me your thoughts on the deal and what you think, and we'll go from there. So the Arizona Diamondbacks have signed Madison Bumgarner to a five-year, $85 million deal. That is a lot less than I thought he would sign for. I, he is 30 years old. He, and just given the fact that the contracts we've seen going around, it's, I mean, Zach Wheeler got 118 over five years. So, uh, the fact that someone like uh, Madison Bumgarner can only get $17 million a season, that's, I mean, look, you know, Zach Wheeler had a much better season. Madison Bumgarner did not have a great season. He had a 3.9 ERA. But... He still has a much better track record, and he's not old. I mean, at the end of the deal, he'll be, uh, well, he'll have just turned 35. But he'll be 34 for the majority of his final season. And I just really like this deal for the Diamondbacks. The other thing I really like for the Diamondbacks is that they got him to agree to uh, defer $15 million. So for a team like, you know, most of the time deferments don't really matter for like, uh, well, I shouldn't say most of the time. I should say... For for big market teams like the Yankees and the Red Sox and the Dodgers, teams that are consistently pushing the luxury tax line, it doesn't really matter if they defer money because the amount of money, the way the luxury tax works is it takes average annual value of the contract. So teams can't manipulate a contract by saying, you know, we're going to sign a guy to $85 million, but the first year we're only going to pay him a million dollars because then, you know, it wouldn't, there's no benefit to that. But for a team like the Diamondbacks, who don't have a high payroll, deferring $15 million just allows you to, because clearly they think their window is the next five years. And I can't really disagree with that. You know, they have... Uh, Oh, er, hold on. So right now their team is, they have Cattell Marte in center field. They have David Peralta in left. They have Josh Rojas in right, who looks like a promising young player. They have Eduardo Escobar at second. Uh, and then they have uh, Christian Walker, who could be a good replacement for Goldschmidt. 
And then they have a lot of prospects coming up. You know, they have uh, their number one prospect is Christian Robinson, who's, you know, just, he just uh, completed the season in April, so he won't be up for another year or two. But he fits within that timeline, that five year timeline. And Dalton Varsho could be, you know, the catcher of their future. He could be up late this year because he finished the season in double A. He could probably start in triple A this year. If not, you know, he'll be a relatively quick call up. And then, you know, they could either sign him call him up late in the season or, you know, he'll be ready to go for 2021 because, you know, like I said, like I said in the, in one of the, in the video about the new roster changes, there's like, he's probably not, there are no more real September call-ups for young guys and so I think like you know he'll either be uh, called up uh, he'll probably be their starting catcher by 2021 that's what I would think and you know their, their pitching staff is pretty nice they have uh you know, now they have Madison Bumgarner. They have Robbie Ray. They have Luke Weaver, who he was injured for a lot of the season, but when he pitched, he pitched nicely. He was he did very well. They have Zach Galen, who they traded uh, uh, Jazz Chisholm to the Marlins for. He did very nicely. The thing is, Luke Weaver and Zach Allen probably aren't going to have be able to pitch a full season just because of innings limits. And then they have guys like uh, Merrill Kelly and Alex Young and Robbie Ray. So, you know, they have a good rotation. and. I think they could definitely compete with the uh, for a wild card spot this year, and you know give the young guys another year to develop, and you know they could be a formidable force. I mean, I I don't know if they'll ever be able. You know, it's, listen, the Dodgers could do whatever they want. (laughs) I mean, they have Gavin Lux coming up, and they're going to be a force for a long time. They have a good young core in Bellinger and Seager and uh, Walker Bueller. You know, I mean, they have Will Smith, a catcher. And they're they're just scary. And but that's the other thing the the Diamondbacks did with this. The Dodgers were linked to Madison Bumgarner, so by getting him to sign with the Diamondbacks, they took away a pitcher from their rival. So that's another benefit of this signing for them. And, you know, I think they have J.B. Bukowskis coming up also for uh, on the pitching side. You know, I don't know if he'll be a, a starter or reliever. He might end up being a reliever, but if he's a reliever, he'll be an electric reliever. 
And, you know, it's just all pointing to that five-year window. And, you know, I think it's just a great, you know, I think they're, they're making things happen. You know, and uh, I mean, the NL West outside of the Dodgers, they're not, the Rockies are always going to have a good offense, but, you know, because of that park, their pitching is going to sh- always struggle. And I mean, the Padres are, you know, that's one team that's going to be, uh, uh, tough to, you know, or I shouldn't say tough to compete with because, you know, their guys still have to pan out. But, you know, they could be in the mix with, it could be uh, the Dodgers, the Diamondbacks, and the Padres fighting it out for the next five years. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, you know, I, I like the signing and the fact that you're deferring what is essentially $3 million a year on just allows them to spend $3 million a year on someone else. And who knows? There's still... You know, I mean, maybe do they sign a Josh Donaldson now? I have no idea. That would be a great signing for them if they could do that. (laughs) I mean, you know, looking at their depth chart, Escobar could play third, but he's their second baseman. And, uh, I mean... Josh Lamb's, I mean, Jake Lamb's not really, like, entrenched in that third base slot. So, you know, did they trade for someone else? I don't know. I mean, there's a bunch of possibilities now for them to make that one one more trade to solidify things for them. And like I said, I like the, I like the move for them. But uh, that's it. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, give me your thoughts on the deal. Do you like the deal for the Diamondbacks? What do you think is going to happen this season? I don't know. Uh, Just do that. And uh, see you next time. Bye.